Thanks for joining us today on Expert Corner, where we get a chance to sit down and talk to Salesforce product managers and experts and learn more about their products. So today I'm joined by Iman Barkadarian, and he is the product manager for Private Connect. Private Connect is a tool that lets you build declarative connections between Salesforce and AWS. Super excited to get a little bit deeper into Private Connect, learn about the state of the internet today, see a demo, and hear about the roadmap for Private Connect. Because we will be talking about roadmap, please remember to make all purchasing decisions based on currently available technologies. Let's dive in. Hi, Iman. I'm so excited for you to join us here today. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to, to chat more about this. I think this is going to be a really fun conversation. And, you know, there's some of these topics that we've been talking about that I'm really excited to bring to admins because they are so important for the work that admins are doing. And I know you've been really thinking big picture about the implication of some of the work you're doing um, in the, the kind of state of the internet, state of security today, and then how that relates to us. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk in this kind of big picture thinking um, I know admins are, are encountering a lot out in the world today at, at companies, as consumers, with the state of internet and security. And I know you have a lot of thoughts and insight on that. Do you want to start off, kick us off by sharing with us on that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the state of the internet today, especially in terms of security, is you know high impact across the board. I mean, you see on the news today, security breach at this company or that company uh, all the time, and it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue for these companies that have their services exposed on the public internet. And that's really the reason why, right? You're, you're having your service, you're having it exposed on the public internet. Some bad actors can see into that and they can try to hit your service as much as they can. Sometimes they get lucky, you know, it's just a matter of time. And so the issue with that is it's extremely costly for a lot of these companies that get you know, compromised. They have damage control, repairs, lawsuits and fines. And it's just becoming more prevalent. So a lot of, like, like actually, here's a funny stat. Uh, the DDoS attacks, which is like a bunch of services just overloading a service that you have online, like an attacker, um, they can shut down your service because you just have so many malicious uh, requests coming in. And in, there's been like a 150% increase compared to last year in those attacks alone. And in terms of normal data breaches, that's up 33% compared to last year. So you're noticing wow. these trends are becoming more and more prevalent. And so what businesses are doing now is they're looking for alternative ways to expose their services, not through the public internet. So one route is they're trying to go down the private internet path. And that's awesome that companies are doing that. Um, but the issue there is that it's extremely expensive to set up. It's not a simple task. You got to get a lot of times companies hire partners to implement this. And then the partners have to maintain this. It's just, you got to get network engineers on. There's just a lot of things you have to deal with. So it's unfortunate that it's a complicated process. Um, but that's why I'm excited about what I, we talk a lot about today, which is Private Connect, which mm -hmm. is a partnership Salesforce and Amazon have been working on for some time to, to bring private connectivity between Salesforce and public clouds or cloud providers through the private internet, uh, through point and click. Tell me a little bit, so that's not a term that we talk about a ton, is private internet. And I think it'd be really helpful for admins to have some um, kind of foundation here if that's not something they've encountered before. Tell me a little bit about what that means when you say private internet. Yeah, so a lot of, if you're a user and you go to your Chrome browser, or whatever browser you use, don't want to show any biases here, but if you go to some of these endpoints, you just, a web page really just shows up. Um, and a lot of that ease of access that we experience as consumers, that's really a great benefit because everything is able to be set up and you can connect to these services and get data back and forth. But like I mentioned earlier, that's the public internet side. All these endpoints, anyone can look at, anyone can access. Um, and so that's why you're kind of setting yourself up for malicious actors to take advantage of that. Um, so when we talk about private internet, it's really hiding your services behind a protected network so that only the services you authorize or you want to access it can access it. So it's kind of like 
behind a firewall per se. Mm -hmm. So you can't just go on Chrome or Internet Explorer Safari and just type in that endpoint and get data. You'll you'll just get bounced back on it. But the issue is there's a lot of complexity that comes with that. It's not just a quick transition over. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot more that's involved. But that's more about like what the private internet means. Right. Awesome. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Um, so you know, you talked about how there's that complexity that's in play to engage with it, to, to, to build solutions on the private internet. And often there's been really high you know, barriers to entry to, to build solutions that use the private, uh, private internet, right? Like you said, engaging, um, extensive partners, maybe, uh, more advanced solutions like that, um, that yeah. are more complex. I know you're really excited about some of the tools you've been working on to make this more accessible and more available for companies where this is a use case that they need to pursue or a solution they need to pursue. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you're already a Salesforce customer, you know how awesome it is to get the Salesforce security out of the box, right? You don't have to build all that stuff ground up. And when you're outside of these big company ecosystems, you gotta, it's up to you to deal with that stuff. So already customers know about Salesforce security practices and all that you get for free. Now with Private Connect, we've partnered with Amazon. It's been an awesome initiative that we've spent a lot of time getting out the door. And now you get that same Salesforce security package up on the private internet side too. And just like how you've interacted with a lot of setup pages, if you're an admin in Salesforce, we've exposed a new simple, just point and click setup page to get your private connection set up. We're, we're no network engineers, not, not all this complexity we were spending all this time on the call talking about that an admin could just set it up. We love a declarative UI here. Yeah, we love yeah, declarative, point exactly. and click point and click places to build solutions. Cause you know, we do have a ton of security minded admins. Um, often for our customer companies, admins are one of the, the people in IT or in the organization that helps implement security strategy and helps ensure they're staying compliant with security policy. And um, so I know, I'm sure there's a lot of admins listening. We're gonna be very excited about this. Um, what are some, I know you've been working quite a bit with admins, you know, security-minded admins out in the space at our customer companies, and you've seen some of the use cases where Private Connect has really made a lot of sense for them. Can you tell me more? I always love hearing about um, what our product teams learn from these admin interviews and from customer pilots and things like that. So can you tell me a little bit about the use cases that you've seen kind of come up most often for Private Connect? Definitely. And in fact, instead of just telling you, I'd love to show you, I actually have a, That's awesome. a couple of slides that just showcase at a high level how Private Connect plugs into hopefully a lot of these use cases, admins that watch this. So today we have partnered with Amazon to provide bi-directional connectivity between a customer services in AWS and their world in Salesforce. Now we plan on expanding this to other cloud providers as well, but for the time being, uh, the supported cloud provider is Amazon. So that's for the purposes of this demo, that's what we'll be showcasing some of the great features and use cases in the Amazon world. So like I talked about before, it's really these two worlds apart. There's the Salesforce world, there's the Amazon world. And the real question becomes, how do you link them together? So a couple of use cases that a lot of admins are gonna be excited about is a lot of times the Amazon customer has, shared services like document management systems in Amazon, right? And on the right side, you'll see the Salesforce org. But there is, the question is once again, between them, how do we bridge the two? Mm -hmm. This would be impacted by Private Connect. Or you have an Amazon S3 bucket to send, uh, store some files or an Amazon DynamoDB on the Amazon side. How do we tie that to Salesforce? Maybe you have your customer data center and you're connecting that to Amazon through AWS Direct Connect. Now the question becomes, how do you then connect that customer VPC in Amazon with Salesforce? Or you might be using Heroku private spaces as an instance, one of an example of a private link partner. Uh, and the question is, how do we connect that to Salesforce? So what we've done at a high level is Salesforce is gonna be managing the connections between the two. We're really taking all the complexity previously was setting up a private connection, and we're handling that ourselves. So what we've done is you'll have a Salesforce org on the right here. 
And you'll have your AWS service on the left. Now, what we've done is we've deployed our own Salesforce managed transit VPC in the middle, deployed in the same region as your AWS service. And basically just think about it like a, a person in the middle dealing with those connections. So you have a private connection uh, between our Salesforce managed transit VPC and Salesforce through a VPN like connection, and you're going to get layer three encryption and all the same best Salesforce security practices that you know and love. And then between our Salesforce managed transit VPC and your Amazon service, you have a handshake using a feature called Amazon Private Link, which is a feature that's existed for some time that allows Amazon services to connect with one another over the private internet. So end to end, your connections are never going over the public internet. And this person in the middle is, which is the Salesforce managed transit VPC, is providing that connection. So now how it looks is all the same slides we were showing before. There's just this element mm -hmm. in the middle that provides that connectivity. And this is what previously would have felt or, or been, you know, maybe quite an undertaking, right? Like mm -hmm. managing connections like this. And it likely for a lot of our customers would mean enlisting the help of, like we talked about a, an SI or at least working with a developer partner. And what is so exciting and one of the reasons we're here today is that this is something that is now the domain of the Salesforce admin because you've built this declarative UI for admins to manage these connections and to create, you know, create this connection to AWS. Um, it's super exciting. And I, I think for our admins, as we see more and more of these tools like this become declarative, then their scope widens at what they can manage for our customers and what they can implement and build for our customers. And of course, our goal is always to decrease tech debt, right? So we're not taking yeah. on, you know, expanding our code base and, and taking on kind of additional technical complexities or tech debt. So that's always, no matter what the skill set is for our customers, we're always advocating for using declarative solutions first because you know, your long-term uh, planning and management is going to thank you for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, no need for this custom really solutions exciting. anymore. Uh, this is just a single one-stop shop that all uh, Salesforce enterprise orgs can benefit from. This is super exciting. Can we take a sneak peek at the, the UI? Kind of what I know our admins love to yeah, know, let's be put it to set the test. up. We always sure. try to really make sure we're showing them like the real, real, like what are they going to experience when they're clicking into this part? Where do they find this in Salesforce? So what admins will now see in the setup page, if you go in the quick find, you'll see a new private connect setup page. So if you click that open, um, I'll now talk about the different components of this page and what they mean to you. So if you drop down this AWS regions section at the top of the page, you'll see the currently deployed regions that we support with Private Connect and AWS. And currently we've deployed into US East 1 and US West 2 for uh, AWS customers. Now, right. what is the information in this table? This is the information pertinent to that Salesforce managed transit DPC, that, that person in the middle that's managing those connections. And so this information is critical to create that link. So as you can see here, you can create an inbound connection. This is from the perspective of Salesforce, meaning from Amazon, it's coming inbound, the request into Salesforce. And then you have outbound connections here, which is from Salesforce, we're sending a request out to Amazon. So if we want to show, you know, what does it take to create an inbound connection? What does that really mean? So with an inbound connection, what's going to be involved here is that let's say my Amazon service is in US West 2. So if I'm in the role of an AWS admin, I can confirm by clicking this top right and I can see, yes, this is for US West 2. So for US West 2, this is the service name of the Salesforce Managed Transit VPC. So if I copy this, if I go into Amazon, I can go to our VPC dashboards page. And what I wanna do is I wanna allow or authorize my service to call into the Salesforce Managed Transit service. Right. So what I'll do is I'll create an endpoint inside my AWS um, console, I'll find the Salesforce managed transit service. And I found it here. And then I just start to select which VPC, which virtual private cloud 
service do I want this to be associated with that is sending traffic into Salesforce? So I can choose that. I can choose whatever security groups um, that I've defined in Amazon and a tag. I can set a name and a value so I can easily see this in a list view. So after I've created that, Amazon returns me a VPC endpoint ID. This is now what I can pass back to Salesforce. So now in my inbound connection, I'll select right now, we have a Salesforce to Amazon private link. It's inbound admin blog can be the name. Here's where you put in your endpoint ID that we copied from Amazon. You specify your region, in this case, US West 2, and you wanna provision the connection now. So you can see right here, the status is in pending acceptance. And so what that means is, let's go back to the slides here. We are creating an inbound connection from Amazon into Salesforce. So we have, we're now provisioning that private link to the Salesforce Managed Transit VPC. And so it is currently going through a pending acceptance stage. When we want to update the status of this inbound connection, we can sync to get the most up-to-date status. And that connection is now in a ready state to start sending awesome. traffic. Yeah. Now you there's going to be a little more work on the Amazon side to actually route this traffic through the private mm -hmm. link, which will involve Route 53 and your Salesforce My Domain. But at a high level, that's really what's involved in the inbound connection side. That's awesome. I appreciate that demo. We love we love seeing demos, and we love really seeing what that truly point and click experience is of doing something that I know when I was an admin. I can't imagine having the tools to build something like this. Um, so this is super exciting for having experience. Now we've talked a lot about uh, this connection that you've been working on with Amazon and how to create connections with Amazon. Um, I know you've got a roadmap here and this is a product that you know, you're going to continue to be working on. Can you share any kind of sneak peek into the roadmap with our admin audience? So definitely in our roadmap, this release, we have some exciting announcements. One, customers can experience a new UI detail page for the embed and outbound. And the, what I just showed is a single setup page where you manage both. But not only do you get these UI detail page, but inside of inbound connections, we're now going to expose the source IP that this connection is coming from. And why that's important to admins is... For a long time now, Salesforce has provided access control, security access control, to select which IP addresses can call into your Salesforce org. And so now that we're exposing that in for private connections, you can leverage that same control in these existing Salesforce uh, IP address range uh, features. So network access, you can choose which orgs can actually, what IPs can call into your org or login IP ranges. So a certain profile can only log into certain ranges. So now Private Connect will be able to be supported in that family of control. On top of that, we are planning to, right now we're only supported in the US for Private Connect with Amazon partnership, but we're looking forward to globally rolling out to all the different regions as well. And so we'll be piggybacking off of the Salesforce Hyperforce initiative, which if people aren't aware of is having these Salesforce data centers moving into public cloud, which is really cool. Uh, on top of that, a lot of customers are saying this is an awesome feature. When are we going to bring that into Salesforce Connect? Salesforce Connect is a way to uh, virtualize your data from a third-party provider into Salesforce. So with OData, for instance, how do they have mm -hmm. private connections? And also supporting this in Sandbox and Scratch Orgs. So these, these are a couple of things on our roadmap that we're excited to- Just a couple of things. Yeah, That's just an a awesome couple. roadmap. I yeah. think, uh, you know, our admins that are going to be getting hands-on with this are starting to think about where this fits in with their three-month, six-month, nine-month planning. Um, I think that's some pretty exciting roadmap items there for them. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, really great roadmap there. Well, is it, so before we wrap up, is there anything else that we didn't talk about today? I know there's so much to be excited about with this tool coming for admins. Um, and we're going to be making sure to share, you know, links to how to get started and get hands on in the blog for this video. But is there anything else you want to share with admins about, you know, about this tool or about how they should maybe be thinking about this security feature? A lot of customers love to know about compliance. They want to know, is this compliant? You mentioned it's private internet. So yes, it absolutely is. We got SOC 2 compliance, ISO compliance, PCI 
We have a HIPAA BAA document you can go and review. High Trust um, is just to name a few. There's even more um, mm-hmm. compliance certifications we've gotten for the product. So from a security standpoint, it's not just us saying <laughs> that this is uh, compliant. So that, that's absolutely a, a prerequisite for a lot of customers before they decide to move forward with this. Awesome. And that's so important to know. And, and again, yeah. we'll be making sure to share um, for the blog for this video, like any relevant links and things that uh, Iman has been mentioning. Um, so don't worry if you were trying to go through and pause the video and like jot down all of the, the certs that um, Iman was mentioning. We'll have all that information linked for you so you can reference it. Happy to share that there's a lot of uh, video demos we can share with the as well. We didn't have as much time to talk about the details, but when you're actually ready to get your hands on, with this, you can take a look at those for uh, further steps. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This has been really illustrative and super educational um, for me and I hope for our audience as well. And I know I'm excited to start getting hands on with Private Connect and, and very excited for the roadmap. So thank you so much for joining us today, Iman, and we can't wait to have you on again soon. Definitely. Thanks so much again. I appreciate it. And that's all for today's Expert Corner. Thank you so much for joining us for today's session. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you never miss an episode like this. And you can always find this and other content specifically for you, our Salesforce Admins, at admin.salesforce.com. See you next time.